RC Electronics. This is her first time joining. We've got Greg Kahn from Giorgio's in Washington, D.C. joining us tonight. Thank you so much, buddy. And Mike Vagras, Vagras, North Star Fleet Services in Michigan. We really do appreciate you guys taking the time to come tonight. For those of you that don't know, my name is Buck Wise, Chief Marketing Officer uh, at Cardone Ventures, where we help businesses, business owners, like a lot of you here, uh, we help you with your personal professional and financial goals. We help those become reality. And a part of this team obviously is Jared Glant, who we've partnered with over at Cardone Enterprises. He's president there. How long have you guys known each other, you and Grant now? I've worked with him for uh, 10 years in September. Yeah, I saw today uh, Dave Robarts, who's one of your like master ninja sales. He, he posted a video today of you guys doing a, a reality show together. It was some hiring reality show. Dude, you look 16 years old. Yeah, man. Insane. It's been, it's been, it's been some, uh, some good stories and some good, some good years. Uh, totally. Now, I imagine a lot of the success that you've had, Jared, you attribute, you and Grant both have learned along the way and attribute to data, which is what we're going to be talking about. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. And, it, you know, uh, probably to a lesser degree than uh, a guy like you would, would want to see. Uh, you know. <laughs> Grant has Grant. Grant goes a lot off the gut, and he's open about that. He knows yeah, data, and, but he has a gut. Yeah, and here's the thing: uh, Grant is uh, unapologetic in his positions and his viewpoints, and he right. just goes all in in one direction. And uh, th that's, and I think it's because he has so much confidence in his per ability to produce, uh, sure, outproduce just about anything. Yeah, but I think that that he, he, he's willing also at the same time that he does that to be totally entirely wrong right? and pivot and lean into something else again too. And I think that's, that's pretty important to, to understand about that. A hundred percent. It's about being obsessed, right? With what you're doing and going all in. He talks about that in his Boba, that be obsessed or be average book that he wrote. He talks about the fact that Meerkat was a platform that everybody said, you never know where it's going to go. Why would you waste your time? And Grant obviously talked about the fact that he was going to use the platform while it was available and not just use it, but abuse it. He was going to break the spine of Meerkat. And, and Jared, correct me if I'm wrong, he was the number one streamer on the Meerkat app. Is that correct? Well, and we actually worked our way up the list um, until it was between head and head between us and uh, Madonna. Wow. Seriously? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I swear. Wow, and quite then, the competition. Uh, yeah, and then and then we you know we got it, and then all of a sudden it was like nobody was using a platform ever again, and Periscope's gone too, and yeah, you know, yeah. So that's the cool thing about marketing, though. Yeah, that's what I love about marketing is things are always changing, and there's always somebody that comes up with a new hack or a new thing or a new workaround or a new whatever, and and all of a sudden you're like, man, that was brilliant. If I would have built that, I would have made millions. How come, how come we didn't think of that stupid yeah. thing, plug this to this so they could talk together now? Sure, you know? there's a lot of innovation in marketing. There's yeah. a lot. Yeah, tonight we're gonna talk about data. Now, when you hear the word data immediately, I think most business owners and marketers hear that word and they go, oh God, here comes the boring stuff. Here comes a bunch of numbers. But it's amazing how creative you can be with that data. What are some of the creative things you guys have done over at Cardone Enterprises with that data. I know that, you know, I was talking to Alan not too long ago. He was using the community app to message, text message that community. And he's able to segment the audience specifically with the regions that they live in. I know you guys do your own versions of dissecting and surgical marketing over there. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, data is truth. It's just, you can't, you can't dispute the numbers. And so, when we promote certain things or run certain ads or make certain offers or send certain emails and we have data that backs it up, we were just, we're, we're getting ready to do um, a real estate webinar this weekend. And we went back through and in the show up sequence and the close down sequence, we're going through and we're looking at subject lines, <clears throat> subject lines and emails and open rates, right. click through rates and the close down emails. We're looking at what sales were attributed to what emails and, you know, and then we're going through the ones that worked. We're seeing if there's anything possible we could do to make them better. And the ones that 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 sucked, we uh, right. You know, we took out and we redid. Right. And what time is that? Uh, is that webinar that real estate webinar this weekend? Noon, for that wants noon to on Saturday. Okay. And we we so we did a real estate webinar about three weeks ago, 
and had 80,000 people that registered for it. Uh, this time around, we're doing uh, a, another live deal. It's not like a replay. Or okay. A re You're going live again. Okay. We're going live again. And um, it'll be noon to 2 or 3 p.m. probably. Real estate's a really, really easy thing for him to talk about. So sure. Time just goes by like that. Yep. Um, but you can sign up at grantcardone.com forward slash REI. We've already got 50,000 people registered for it this time around. So it's a really hot topic. Uh, the timing is impeccable on it because moments like these, according to the data, yeah. uh, it, it, the, these economic pullbacks are the time when people really make big money in real estate. So true, uh, true. very timely. Make sure you get on there, grantcardone.com forward slash REI. I saw that today, actually, the real estate sector in the market actually uh, overshadowed technology today, which is just a just a massive data point as well in the trend for the fact that real estate is what's moving the economy right now. And it is something that is not only stable, but something that's lucrative that you should be investing in. So definitely check out that webinar this Saturday. Uh, Jared, thank you as always. I know we're on baby watch with you, so I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you run. Uh, thank you so much for joining upstairs. me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> A daddy daycare constantly. Thanks, Jared. We'll, we'll chat right, with you guys. soon. Okay. Take care. See you, we'll buddy. See you so all. we're going to talk here in just a moment about your marketing. So for those of you that are brand new, my name is Buck Wise, Chief Marketing Officer here at Cardone Ventures. My background is in storytelling, content creation, working for agencies and owning my own agency, working with small brands, mom and pop businesses in the million to $2 million mark, working my way all the way up to big Fortune 500 companies like Starbucks. I worked with Nike. I did digital strategy and social strategy for Nike running, Nike women, uh, you name it, Nike golf. I worked with uh, the pumpkin spice latte team, the Frappuccino team. So I've, I've seen the variance between what it takes as an independent business owner and what it takes with really large scale teams as we've grown and scaled our marketing efforts. Tonight specifically, I'm excited to talk to you about a brand new marketing solution for your business. We have been asked about this for maybe even a year now, for months, at least six to seven months, every single client that we have has said, we need a marketing program. Not just one for me as an owner, but one that I can institutionalize across the entire workforce. Something that every single employee can get involved with, learn from, and then execute accordingly. Tonight, we're gonna, we're, you, you are the absolute first to see this. We're gonna unveil this at cardonventures.com slash marketing. If you want to get a head start, go to cardonventures.com slash marketing. This is a brand new program that I'm excited to bring to you. But first, let's talk about data. When we come back, we're going to be talking about how you can be effective building your own data sets. What is quantitative? What is qualitative data? What is the CRM? Do I need one? I'm in spreadsheets or I have papers that I've written in. How can you advance your own marketing efforts by starting with the foundation essentials in data? Really quick, some rules. Turn on your camera for those of you that are joining me tonight. I can see you. I can see you behind me. I see Enrique and John. Wave guys, you're on. Todd, John McIntyre, even Jesh is here. David, look at that. Dr. Ashley right next to her dad here in the, in the look at this. Amazing. Right next to dad. There, I'll, I'll figure it out. All right, you got Nate here. So there's hundreds of you in here now, and I want your cameras on. This is live. This is interactive. We're going to engage. I'm going to ask you questions. We're going we're gonna to do some polls. We're going to talk about what's working with your business and what are areas that we can improve on. The second thing is go into speaker view for the best experience. You see the speaker view here. I'm, I'm not a weather guy, right? Weather guy. That's so, like If you look over here at the radar, you got the thing in the, and you see the precipitation coming in here. So yeah, so go to speaker view. Right now I'm in grid view because I wanna see all of you. You're gonna have a better experience up at the top right if you hit speaker view. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I need you to comment. This has to be interactive. My soul is empty if you do not engage and interact. I don't wanna sit here from a pulpit and talk about what works, what doesn't work, my experience. I wanna learn more about you and what are the needs of your business. So get in that chat, don't be shy. Turn the camera on, uh, but do not spam. Nobody wants to see the spam link over and over and over again about your business. Sheriff Josh Dawson will kick you right out of this Zoom if you start doing that. Anyway, guys, excited for tonight. Brandon Dawson will make an appearance. I've got a couple of really special guests throughout tonight's Owners Live. Thank you for joining me here on this Zoom, and let's get things started right now.
The whole purpose of this show is to engage with business owners, be able to answer questions for people that will give them some insight and perspective. how to grow and scale a business, even when caught off guard with something like what we're dealing with right now. Welcome to 10X Owners Live. So you'll open as many square feet of space, uh, physical space as you have to, hire as many employees as you have to. To service customers, absolutely. And we'll do it as rapidly as we can. That's a very uh, cost intense proposition. Not compared to opening an equivalent network of retail stores. So if you open a bunch of chain stores, look, when we open a distribution center, we're opening places that may have, square, you know, where we may pay uh, 30 cents a square foot for, uh, for a lease instead of paying $7 a square foot, which you might pay in a high traffic retail area. So when you compare those things, they're not the same. You can't compare a big chain of, 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 uh, of retail stores to half a dozen distribution centers. It's just not, you know, it's bad math. Think about anything that's been successful. And what was it that catapulted that business to success? For Jeff Bezos, it was the way he remodeled the distributions, right? It was the way that he calculated exactly how to be more efficient. How did he do that? In the comments, let me know. How did he do that? One big important word, data. Studied the data, extrapolated the data, cross-compared the data, and he made a decision. He took a risk, made a decision, and he created Amazon and what we know today. So data is a strategy game. Data is a competitive game. Understanding your data, your competitor's data, and how to optimize your marketing strategy with that data is so important. My name is Buck Wise. If you've just logged on, I see a few more joining us now. This is Owners Live. It is interactive. It's an engaging uh, chance for us to communicate, and build a relationship, and for you to meet like-minded business owners, like these business owners you're seeing here tonight live on our Zoom chat. Uh, really quickly, before I bring in a few guests, I know Brandon Dawson is already here live from Miami. Brandon, I'm in your garage right now. That's where we do this live Zoom. It is the one time Brandon has decided to go to Miami. It's like 90 degrees in here and I'm sweating. How are you, buddy? Is it any cooler? Hey, Buck, I'm doing, I'm doing great. Yeah. Uh, you're, looking, you're looking great in there even without me. <laughs> I got it. You know what? I got a lot to live up to today. So I'm trying to bring it. I'm trying to bring it today. Um, I, I, noticed, I noticed there was some extra dirt on that white Ferrari. What's going on? Well, we took it for a quick spin. Yeah, we're in the garage. I wish we had a shot of the garage right now. We've got the, the Ferraris and the, the rolls and everything here in the Oh, we do have a wide shot. There we, there's the team. This is literally the garage. This is Brandon's garage. But, um, but yeah, Brandon, listen, we're talking about data tonight, and I know that that's something that's near and dear to your heart. My background, what's interesting, if I, full disclosure, I was a creative first. I was creating stories, I was building shows and content, and it wasn't until later in life that I realized the power of that creativity with data. And so for you, what does data mean and what has it meant to your career? For those of you that don't know Brandon Dawson, allow me a quick introduction. This is Cardone Ventures. This is the company that, we, that he is the CEO and I'm the CMO for. Um, he sold his last company, Audigy, at 77 times EBITDA write that data point down, $151 million. So Brandon, what has data meant to you? Well, first, uh, and for those of you that don't know me that this is your first experience, this is Natalie. She is the vice president of Cardone Ventures and she also happens to be my fiance. So there's another great data point. Yeah. As another great data point, we are here in our condo in Miami and our Wi-Fi might be a little spotty because we've good. switched places with Buck yet again. Buck knows our Wi-Fi password, but right now we're operating off of cellular. Oh, it looks good for cellular. For All LG. right. Good. Perfect. So, you know, Buck, uh, what got me in trouble with my first company that I took public and acquired 118 businesses or something in three years, right. and franchised 900, is I didn't... I didn't put the value and importance in measuring key performance indicators. Right. And, and I didn't, and we didn't have the tools and the, 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 the stuff available to us today. Excuse me. Can you, can you do me a favor? I need to put my arm up here. We didn't have the tools and stuff available to us that we have uh, today from a technology standpoint. Right. So 
So what? So you know, you, you had to build uh, AS four hundred mainframes, and you're always behind the curve without data telling you what you, the implication of your choices. Sure. And without using data to direct you where your most leverage is in the business, everything's hard and you're flying blind. So right. I became data centric when I launched Autogy. I wouldn't make any decisions if I couldn't find supportive data or, or contrarian, I don't know if that's the right word, but data that would say, don't do this. Right. Um, then if, if I found either of those, then I would know what lane I'm moving in. But uh, I think it's the most important facet of business and in, in you know, when, when you do it right, and as you and I know, we've been mentoring under Grant and the whole team uh, on the marketing side, learning new things, and you and I are watching the data points hourly to understand what decisions. Sure, yeah, no, 100%. I know that speed to market is something that's important, but having better informed decisions because of that data is something that's key. Some other, some other things that make data super important is better business decisions, such as Brandon was talking about with Audigy. And then centralizing that data from a data access, uh, access point is super important as well, because having data in one spot and data in the other spot doesn't do it justice if you aren't able to take those data points and put them together. But what does all of this mean to marketing? Brandon, feel free to interject at any point. I want to make a... Yeah, hey, look, I just, what, I, what I do want to do is just point out the importance of data. Here's a couple Yeah, sure, go for it. And then, and then I'm going to let you go because I love watching you. This is your area of expertise. Sure. Um, and towards the end in q and I'll jump in, but I'm going to let you do your thing. But sure. here's some data points. 31 million American businesses... 25 million of those 31 have one employee. Right. 5 million of those have between uh, three and I think the number is 11. And then 600,000 have more than 11. Right. Two thirds of businesses fail in the first five years. The top three reasons they claim they fail is because A, they're undercapitalized, B, there isn't a need for what they do. So think how stupid that data point is. Right. Why would you launch a business if no one needs it? Right. And then the third element is they can't hire and attract people to help them. Now, the truth is in all three of those categories, Grant will tell you the number one reason businesses fail is people don't sell. So if you take all three of those categories, one, I didn't have enough money because I couldn't sell somebody and giving me money because they didn't believe in my idea. Right. Two, number two, uh, people didn't want what I had because I never learned to sell what I had. And so therefore, why would somebody, there's no demand for it because I don't know how to pitch the value proposition. And three, I couldn't hire any good people to help me grow and scale. Well, you couldn't hire anybody because you couldn't sell them on the idea of working for someone who had no idea how to do one and two. Right. Right. So, Devoid of data, you're always going to be in trouble. And Buck, I know you're going to take it away from here, so go for it. A hundred percent. Brandon, thank you for bringing those amazing data points to tonight's program. It's, it's super important not just to have it, but to be able to understand it, right? To be able to extrapolate it. Because you can actually, you know, th and this was what Jared and I were talking in the pre-show about Grant and his gut ability versus looking at data. You know, you can data yourself to death from a marketing standpoint. Business-wise, what Brandon was talking about and his history, data is king. It is the absolute uh, top. You must have data from a business standpoint. From a marketing standpoint, you can definitely data yourself to death. I do wanna bring in a, a really special guest and a close friend and mentor of mine. Um, I, as, as many of you know, because you know my history of working with really big brands, um, I, I, part of my history is working at one of the world's largest advertising agency and the chief operating officer of Wonderman Thompson West happens to be very close to me. He is a data dude. Paul Willie is my buddy, my friend, and we've worked on some really amazing campaigns together that, that, that I'd like to talk to Paul about. Is, is he in tonight, Paul? Buck, I'm here. There he is. Paul Willie yes. made it tonight. Paul. So uh, you and I have a little history together working with some of these big brands. And when I heard data, I thought, who is the nerdiest person I know? <laughs> <laughs> and it was you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Uh, he, he's got style and data at the same time. Uh, Paul is a data wizard, and he just comes with a breadth of knowledge and experience. So I wanted to, get a, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions as we talk tonight about data in marketing for a lot of these business owners. The first question is, 
What is the difference, Paul, between qualitative and quantitative data? And, and is that important from a marketing standpoint? Yeah, that's an excellent question, Buck. Qualitative versus quant. Uh, here's the way I think of it. Quant are your numbers at scale. How many, uh, how many of my target customers or target clients are living on the West Coast and are this average household income and have this many kids? Those numbers, that kind of quant calculative sort of uh, information, that's, that's what we think of as quantitative data. Okay. And I think what quant does is it helps round out the picture of who are we trying to reach and what are they doing? Right. The qualitative is all that connective information in between. Like if you were able to pick up the phone and talk to every single customer and understand, uh, understand what is life like for them on an average day, where do they spend their time? What are the things that they stress about, the things that motivate or detract from their decision making? That's the qualitative component, the part that kind of makes up who you are and how you work. Uh, if you take that plus the information, you tie that together, you have this beautiful 360 view of who you're really trying to reach, their attitudes, their sentiments at any given moment in time, and what is it that's going to really resonate uh, with them when you really need to reach out to them. Sure, and so when at Cardone Ventures, we work with clients constantly, and what we do is we build their businesses from a marketing standpoint. We create their audience profile, and we look at quant and qual. We look at personas. We look at zip code analysis. We look at Facebook and Google Analytics, and we combine all that to create what Paul's talking about, that 360 view, understanding all aspects of those help you make better decisions. Why, Paul? They're making better decisions when it's time to send that tweet, when it's time to create that video, when it's time to create whatever that umbrella campaign is for that product or that service that you offer, having a better understanding of who your customers are, that is the data point that is super important, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Paul, I really quickly, I'd like to get into just a fun, juicy story that I think everyone will enjoy. When, when we talk about data, it can get expensive as a small business, a mom and pop startup, it can get really expensive to try to collect that data and compare the data and hold it somewhere. These CRMs, the customer relationship management software tools, they're not necessarily the cheapest way to go. Um, what, is, what are some other ideas to get started with, say, like social listening? What are some other ideas that businesses can start right now? Like take away from this Zoom call tonight on Owners Live. What could they start doing right now? And then give me a great example of how we've done that in the past. You bet. And that's a fantastic question. I love your point about social media. Uh, I think of social media as, yes, it's a place where people have a chance to connect. But marketers, this is a treasure trove of information around, again, interests, sentiment, motivators at any given time about virtually anything. Um, and I'll give you an example to, to talk about first. And then how do we put that into action, uh, even for your businesses? Um, you know, one of the one of the world's largest um, companies out there is Starbucks. Starbucks has endless information about target customers and potential customers. But when they really wanted to resonate with a younger millennial audience for their Frappuccino beverages and summer beverages, rather than turning to their own treasure troves of data, they went straight to social media and they used social listening. In other words, how can we begin to use free or very inexpensive tools? just to listen to the types of conversations happening about summertime, about drinks, about how you, how you spend your time with friends. Sure. And we begin to take elements of those conversations and things people are putting out into the world to pull together some ideas. And you can do uh, that for free, right, Paul? Like hashtags, you're following competitors' accounts. You're just, it's, it, the, the investment there is not a million dollar CRM. It's the time and energy to go through and actually follow conversations in social, right? To get those data points. That is exactly right, Buck. It's, this is a time, uh, a time commitment, not a cost commitment here. Right, right. And so what was it that we found when we were both on this campaign together at Starbucks, what was it that we found that the social audience was talking about that the brand didn't even know about its own product? So this is what I love about Starbucks is Every time a new season comes around, they are often inventing a new flavor that they are trying to sell and market. And so they, they turned to social media to figure out what is it that, they, that might inform that next beverage decision. And what they found were eight different flavors uh, or uh, secret menu items that um, aren't published on the Starbucks menu, but are fan favorites. 
things that I guess if you look through operational logs or sales logs, you may have been able to find, but not, not like you would in social media. And so we found these eight, uh, these eight beverages, these secret menu items, and began to just build some social content around these items you can't find on a menu, sure. but if you know, you know, and you can go in and actually ask for those. And the biggest uh, one that I think people know about today was it was the cotton candy frappuccino. Wasn't that the one that they discovered? People were taking weird syrups and ice and they were like, look, it's a cotton candy frappuccino. We were like, hey, this is a thing that the brand doesn't even offer, right? That is exactly right. And if you ever look at one of these things, it's pink like my shirt. Uh, it is crazy amounts of sugar in it. But people <laughs> this. All we did was we took one picture just to show you that amplification of what social media can do. When you understand interest and understand uh, uh, sentiment and attitudes, um, we took one picture of this one drink and posted it on social media. And within a, uh, within a week's time, we got the phone call from the head of operations at Starbucks Global and said, please stop talking about these flavors because <laughs> we're worldwide right now and cannot replenish them. Okay, so I want everyone to pay attention to this story for one good reason. There's a reason we're telling you this story, not just about the data, but there's something that Brandon Dawson always talks about. He talks about that person at your front desk. When we talk about operational effectiveness, when we talk about everyone on your team being a sales and, and, and marketing employee, everyone having a sole responsibility inside your organization to change the path and future of the success of that organization. Paul, where did that insight come from? Was that from a you know, $180,000 data scientist that we had combing the internet? You know, that's a, it's an excellent question, Buck. This was from an intern who happened to love Frappuccinos and who paid attention to behaviors on Instagram. Guys. And she and surfaced this idea of, what if we did a, a photo of this drink and someone sipping it? Let's see what would happen. And this one idea from an intern turned into this incredible, um, this, this incredible campaign that drove record sales for Starbucks like L they've never seen and haven't seen since, honestly. L listen to this story. An intern shut down operations for Starbucks. An intern in an organization found a data point, made a decision with a data point. It's so tiny, it's listening. Are you listening? Are you listening to your consumer? Are you listening to your competitor? Are you watching? So, so many times you get into data and you talk about numbers and numbers and numbers and CRMs. Just listen to the data. Right, And this is a free way that you as a business owner can start doing this right now. It takes time, right? If you have a staff, work with your staff to implement this kind of strategy in your business constantly. What kind of information are you pulling in? Ask them, what did you find yesterday? What kind of data are you seeing? What are you seeing on our channels? What are you seeing on competitor channels? What are you seeing on like-minded brands that associate with, with a, co a company like ours? You know, this is such an easy, free, immediate way for you to be involved in building what your data looks like. Now, obviously, Paul and I could geek out on data. We could get super deep into building your CRM. We could get super deep into building your audiences. But what I would love for you to do is I'd love for you to take a look at a brand new product that we've just created, and it's available right now. You are the very first audience that gets to see this, and it's at cardoneventures.com slash marketing. The essentials in your business start right here. And you're going to lose your minds when you hear how affordable this is. The amount of value that you're going to get for $197 a month, you are going to get those marketing essentials like building the CRM, understanding the data in your business, your marketing toolkit, how to create podcasts. Every single week, you're going to see new content when you join the Marketing Essentials product. It's $197. You're getting funnels, how to build funnels, coming next month. Every single month, every single week, you're getting brand new content. And a lot of this information that you're hearing about tonight, you can get all the details at cardoneventures.com slash marketing. You are the absolute first. That 497 number that you're seeing on your screen, that is exactly how much it's gonna cost one week from now. You have an opportunity to join this tonight for $197 as part of the very first launch for Cardone Ventures. So many of you have told me that marketing is the area that you struggle in the most. Tell me in the comments if what part of marketing that you're struggling with the most. I wanna get 
I wanna get a little bit of a health check right now on visit data. And we are gonna do a data poll here in just a second. Uh, one, last quick, one last quick example that I think is important. You know, Brandon is to me, and Brandon, feel free to pipe in here. Brandon is the king of location, like being able to understand market density, zip code analysis. Um, you know, uh, Paul worked with a local company that if you were in the Pacific Northwest, you've heard of. Is it Bar 3? Isn't that right, Paul? That's correct, yes. Yeah, and, and, and Bar 3 is a well-known uh, yoga uh, facility and fitness center here in the Pacific Northwest. Paul, tell us a little bit about how this business is very much like a lot of the Cardone Ventures clients that we work with. It was a, a husband and wife that started this business together and what data did for their business. That's exactly right, Buck. So it was a husband and wife that started Bar 3. And the concept was simple. They believed that they had something unique when it came to fitness and wellness that wasn't being served in the marketplace. But again, like most business owners, uh, when they're starting, there's only so much capital to really start and scale. So they opened three actual brick and mortar studios. It was the wife that had started doing the actual training and trained up a couple of other folks. And then they pivoted and decided what we really want to do is franchise. Franchising is where we felt that, or they felt that they could really grow the business best. But the number one rule with, uh, with franchising is this, you, it's all about location. Right. So how do you determine where there's a good market uh, to open up another franchise for a brand new fledgling brand. Um, well, there is one aspect of Bar 3 that I did not mention, and that is that they had an online subscription to take classes at home. Mm. They didn't realize they had Buck, and this is the part that I love about this story, is they have three little studios in greater Portland, Oregon area. And then as they're starting this concept of franchising, they also had uh, a, a growing subscriber list online of people all around the Northwest and world. Yeah. Uh, started taking these classes. And so right? they owned their own data, but didn't have the ability to read it, understand it, optimize and pivot with that data that they owned, right? That is 100% right. Yeah, and, and so really that that knowing who subscribed to those to those bar 3 online classes helped them locate which areas they had the most concentrated customers and users that would then attend in person, right? 100% in essence, what they had was, uh, was this, this massive list of people with zip codes and addresses, and they hadn't been really looking at that information to understand where are we beginning to build up a critical mass of customers right. and how should we form our franchising strategy. Right. It all took a little bit of time and a little bit of an open mind to say, hey, we've got something here that could help inform our business in a way that we have not been using today. Right, right. Brandon, I know that you know, market densities and the data when we're doing zip code analysis is super important to Cardone mm -hmm. Ventures and what we do for our, our platforming clients. Can you talk a little bit about where this really came from? Because I know you did this in, in your prior business with Audigy. Yeah, well, you know, what, what I find is, uh, I'll give you just a slight example because I'm, I'm going through and approving the platform deliverables that we're doing for a handful of clients right now. And, you know, they have a business and around their video business, there's some data points I like to explore, like how far out, if they're in a single location, how far out do their 80% of their clients order from? And then how many zip codes are in that radius? And then how many transactions do they do in each of those zip codes and why? Right. And then based on population, based on demographic information, based on competitors, why can't they penetrate or what happens if they penetrate all those zip codes at the highest level of the best zip code that they've been able to impact? Because right. then that drives me into what they're doing behaviorally into the one through 11 zip codes. Now, if it's a national business, I do the same thing. What states are you spent? Are you selling more into? What's the population of those states? What's the competitive density of those states? So I can go to the states where you've got the highest penetration rate and study what behavior, what characteristics, what relationships. I do that also by segmenting the clients. So by the time we're done splicing and dicing all this information, we assimilate and accumulate and go to all of our research databases. We come back with a formulated strategy of where you should should be spending your money, where you should be spending your energy, what kind of energy you should be spending. Right. 
What kind of clients are you getting? Why are you getting those clients? How many more of those clients are out there everywhere in every state that you're not thinking of? Right. And, and you go, you just started a big thing, you go all the way down until you have a very specific strategic direction that involves all aspects. When people talk about marketing, you have marketing, you have branding, you have advertising. Um, so, so you got selling, that's marketing. Sure. Um, what words you use, who you say it to, how you say it. Yep. Um, so, so when you reformulate everything about the business and the, and, and the business of the business, and you can start to answer questions, you know, I always say the quality of your questions will determine the quality of your outcome. And the reason I say that is because I learned through my failures in my first business to be a why guy. Like, why are we thinking that way? Why are we doing it? 100%. And then what if, what if, or yep. what, and how do you know and prove it? And I'll challenge people as anybody that works for me knows I'll challenge them and take them all the way to the map. Because what I find is that people will take defensive positions because they don't want to be wrong or they want to sound smarter than somebody else. Sure. But if they can't back it up with the data, then I can't trust the recommendation. And I, and, and I, I try to teach business owners, this is how you have to conduct yourself every day. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Brandon, I can unequivocally say does not accept no for an answer. First of all, there's always a way to make it happen. And number two, always be supported with data. Always have that reason why. Always have the intention and have the data to back up your decisions. A hundred percent. In fact, Buck, I want to stress the reason I got 77 times EBITDA for my business is because when I knew two years before I wanted to sell, yeah, I hired a, a research firm to study who I knew probably the eight most probable buyers were. Right. And to come back to me with what they saw as their future competitive struggle or disadvantage. Right. And they were all out buying retail and I knew they didn't have the systems I had. So when I went to sell my company, my presentation wasn't, here's my business, here's how much revenue I do, and here's my EBITDA number. I started with, you're going to pay me $200 million. They all laughed at me, by the way. And then I said, let me explain why. And then I went into, if they deployed my systems across their global enterprise, here much, here's how much enterprise value I would create for them. And then instead of selling on me, I said, but I want 20% of the upside. So right. I'll sell you because I'm going to create a billion. I want 200 million. And, you know, uh, five laughed me out of the box, three got serious, one won the bid and it was 151 million. So I didn't get the whole 200. And then they went from 1 billion in market value to 3.2 billion in less than 36 months. Wow. So you won and they won because you both understood data, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, I want to do a quick poll really quickly. Let's see, How, where do they go to take this poll? In the chat, Bryce? Yeah. Okay, go to the chat right now. There's going to be a link in the chat. These are the questions that we're going to ask you really quick, and we're going to get live answers. This is a live Q&A. Uh, Paul, thank you very much, by the way, for joining. If you can hang, I'd love for you to hang out and answer. I've got a lot of questions coming in from everyone, and I want to make sure that I keep all the marketing wizards and data wizards on with me. So is your data in one place? That's a question we're asking. Is your data connected? Is your data at the speed that you need it? I'm getting a health score from everyone making sure that their data is where it needs to be. How confident are you in your ability to connect your data, understand your data, and then operate outside of the data that you have? These are all the questions that we're gonna be asking you. I believe it's, uh, what's the link there? It's, oh, it's the Servicate link from Cardone Ventures. Just click that. And then Bryce, you just ping me whenever we've got the answers in there. And I'll bring up the results. Let's get it. All 300 of us here. Let's figure it out. Let's see all together. How confident are we in our data and what we have for our data? Um, so really quickly, Paul, I wanted to ask you one last question. Um, what is one of the easiest steps a business could take in your mind from a marketing standpoint? If let's say they're in spreadsheets, they don't even have a CRM. What's the easiest step you would recommend to a business just getting started with their data? Do they go immediately invest into some platform? Do they, you know, do they write out what their strategy should be from a data standpoint? Like what, which way are you going left or right here? Yeah, excellent question. I honestly believe that tools and platforms are a means to an end. They aren't the end. Mm. So you have to be able to choose and decide where you want to go first. Buck, I like what you talked about with strategy um, and, and Brandon illustrated this perfectly when he talked about selling his business. Um, he looked at those potential buyers and then he went deep on understanding them 
And then you decide, where do I want to go with this? Right. What I want, I want to sell for maximum dollars. Now, how am I going to, how am I going to get there? Um, it's the same thing with data is determine where you want to be going with this. And then when we talk about systems or platforms or ways to be able to action your data or understand your data, getting it into a place where you can understand and take action quickly is everything. I, so I would say, I would say strategy first and then platform second. Beautiful. Um, so let's go to some questions really quickly. Let's go to, who do we, who do we have? Let's go with Kathy. No, let's go Stephanie. Uh, number three, Stephanie, uh, what's your question? And by the way, you can feel free to fill your questions up right now in the chat and we are happy to get to them. Stephanie, how can we help you tonight? Welcome to Owners Live. Hey, Buck, thank you. I think you actually just addressed part of the question. Um, I was interested in learning, you know, as a small business, a lot of my CRM has traditionally been manual and built in Excel. So I was looking for a recommended platform or software. And what I heard really is, build out the strategy first and then the tools will follow. Second question is, you know, how can data support the CRM and how should the CRM list drive really drive social media and data decisions in the future? Sure, that's such a great question, Stephanie. I know I, I have an answer for that. I do wanna bring Paul in to, to help answer that as well from a marketing standpoint. But the more data that you have, you know, to know your customer is to love your customer, right? To know them is to love them. And the more data that you have on them, the more you're able to connect and create that beautiful relationship before them. So if you've got that information, you're able to make decisions quicker that apply more naturally and organic to them. So, you know, I, I always use this as a joke. You know, if I was in, uh, if I knew that my audience was a, a super, you know, and, and by the way, knowing religion and politics, understanding that data, if you can get it, if you can buy third party data and understand that, it's important. But imagine you have a super liberal audience. Would you want to show off your gun collection to that super liberal audience? Absolutely not, right? You're creating a horrible friction in your relationship. So having all of these data points and understanding how deep you can get with your consumer is gonna ultimately make the best data set that you can have. Paul, how would you answer that question? You know, I totally agree, Buck. I think the other thing that I was thinking about is that being data centric is a mindset and a way of being, uh, and it's the way that you should operate every single day. If I can learn one more element about my customers over the course of a day or a week, it's going to make me that much smarter. Uh, I love the point about, um, is, it a, is it a liberal audience and you're showing, you're, you're, you're talking about guns <laughs> right, or- Right, right. It's, it's an extreme example, but I use it. <laughs> But it's a real one, right? And I think um, really understanding interests behind your, your customers helps you tailor messages so much better. There was a question I noticed in the chat um, that I think is worth just answering. And sure. uh, the question, what is CRM? Customer relationship management. Easy. And the concept is, if I can know that you are Paul Willie and you live in Portland, Oregon, and you have two children, but you love to bike and hike and you love wine. Now you know a whole lot more about me if you can store that in one place, that's what a CRM is. Right. You can be a, a whole lot more targeted in what you want to say to me based on who I am. Totally. And this is going to get a little bit deeper than what I intended for tonight. But imagine now you have that information. You know who Paul is, you know where he lives, and you know his interest, right? The ability to scale, not just from a business standpoint, which is what Brandon talks about, but the ability to scale your marketing efforts is through automation. So now imagine you have this information. It's not just about your manual ability to connect with one audience, but it's about your ability to scale content, touch points, and campaigns and creation with multiple audience at the same time constantly, right? That's how you scale your business from a marketing standpoint. So not having a CRM, let's say I know all of those things about Paul, right? but I don't have it in a way that can be automated. It's in a spreadsheet. What good does that spreadsheet, if it's Google Docs, if it's a Microsoft spreadsheet, Excel, what good does that customer information do me sitting static in a document? When he comes to the website, do I know it? Does the spreadsheet tell me that he came to the website? No. Does the spreadsheet tell me how long he stayed on the website? No. Does your CRM? Yeah, it tells you. Does it tell you, does the CRM tell you that this person who just came to your website hasn't bought a product in six months and all of a sudden they're revisiting your website again? Absolutely it does. That is how you take the data and make it more powerful. And that's going down an entire different rabbit hole. It sounds like the- yeah, hey, hey, Buck, I wanna add something. Because yeah. look, I ran uh, 500 locations 
with a whiteboard. So, right, right. You know, you, you guys that come from the big, big corporations working with, working with Starbucks, you know, I spent <laughs> yeah. my career working with people that didn't even use a computer sure. to enter QuickBooks or anything. So, yeah. so I, I want to make sure we get, bring, bring this thing to basics. Yep. You, you can track, look, if you mail a thousand of something, you should be tracking how many phone calls of that thousand of whatever you mailed, how many times the phone rang or how many people pinged your website sure. and entered a code. And you should track what happened when the phone rang and the person that answered it. Did they set the appointment because they followed the process perfectly and flawlessly? And right. if you have three different people answering it, who answered it better than the second or third person? And what were they doing different? Then you track them coming in and how much money did they spend based on the presentation you gave them? And if you've got multiple people giving this presentation, who was better than the next? You see, so many decisions are driven when business owners, and when I go into a business and you have multiple people doing the same thing, they're like, oh, Johnny goes first, Sally goes second, Marcus goes third, Susan goes fourth. Well, what if Johnny can't close the transaction as well as Susan? Why would Johnny even go just because he's in some random order? Right. So the way you should be running your business is you should be measuring the single highest impact of everything that you do across the spectrum of everyone doing this so you can make great decisions to flow all the highest levels of success in real time in your business. You don't need computers to do that. You need to be paying attention. Totally. A hundred percent. And so uh, for a lot of you, it sounds like you are definitely in need of your base marketing essentials. And that is why tonight's program is so exciting for us. If you go to cardonventures.com slash marketing, these are the things we're gonna be talking about. This monthly subscription, again, is only $197, and you're gonna get building your data, understanding your CRM, starting from absolute scratch and working your way up. You're also going to get new courses every single week, every single month. You're gonna get podcast essentials. Next month, we've got Funnels 101. If you've never created a funnel and you wanna understand how to start doing it, this is going to be the subscription that you need to apply to your business. So I don't know the last time that you spent $197, but I can guarantee you that is a 10x value and that I am personally responsible for bringing as much experience and data back to you. And I'm listening to you, which is why we did this poll tonight. So if you haven't signed up just yet, let's take a look at our survey and see how you've answered. Let's get a quick health score. Is your data in one place? Is your data in one place? 59% of you said, no, no, multiple places, scattered data. Um, and so, you know, how are you able to take that data and put it into one place? The Marketing Essentials monthly subscription is going to talk about this. If that's you, cardonventures.com slash marketing, cardonventures.com slash marketing. Is your data connected? Let's take a look at this. Big drum roll, is your, or is your data, sorry, correct? Oof, half of you say yes, half of you have said no. So uh, let's talk about dirty data for a second. Uh, Paul, have you run into any clients in your history that have had dirty data? And what is the first step? And what do I mean by dirty data? What's your description? I know what it means, but what's your description of dirty data? And does that hurt or help a business? Fantastic question, yes. Uh, we encounter it all the time. Uh, dirty data is inaccurate information about people yep. and that you are, and the real risk uh, is, is what if you take action on that? Right. Um, a good example I always like to think about is um, there's a, there's an email marketing um, list that I got on for a, a clothing company and somewhere along the way they thought that I was a woman and it's because <laughs> I was you do look life. pretty Paul. I'm not going to lie. Do you like that? So <laughs> I am constantly hit up on uh, by them for women's clothing, even though I only bought for her once and I bought for myself other times. I see. I, I'm categorized over here. Uh, so you think about the miss. They, they could have been marketing to me as a, a, a buyer for my wife as well as for myself. Sure. They just opportunity and at least have. So where you get your data from is super important and understanding exactly how to segment it. 
so that you know exactly who your customer is is super important. Well, Paul, what would be your advice to somebody who says that they, you know, the 50% of business owners here tonight said that they, they possibly have dirty data? What is the first step to correct that? I think, I think uh, the first thing is get back to basics and make sure you're building with a clean foundation. Uh, so let's say you have, at least you have names or you have email addresses and or mailing addresses. Sure. How can you begin to look at a strategy to begin to augment that with information you know to be true and accurate? I loved what uh, Brandon talked about. Um, it doesn't have to be super sophisticated, but right. it's important to know. Did they walk in and buy something? Have they been inside of your location? When was the last time that they contacted you or had any engagement with your brand? It's probably one of the most important things that you could know right this second. Uh, so how can you begin to capture that? Don't worry. If, if you can't believe in the data, you might as well look past it and begin to build a new foundation. Mm, mm. Great answer, Paul. Let's look at the rest of these data points real quick. We'll go through quickly here. How confident are you? Let's move to how confident are you? The speed in which you need it. Okay, we'll do speed in which you need it. Let's take a look at it real quick. Is your data available at the speed in which you need it? 70% said no. And speed, as we know, we talked about that earlier. Speed is super important. Having that at your, your fingertips and being able to understand it um, is important. Let's go to the last one. How confident are you in your ability to collect, understand, and optimize? Oh, varied approach here. Okay. So w Bryce, walk me through the numbers here. Which one's most confident? Which one is it? All right. Most confident is number five. Number which lands at 12%. 12%. So so 12% of you said that you are, you are confident. So then one is 15%. Okay, so it, we find that whenever we do a one through five, everybody goes to the middle. It's like, that just shows me you're a little unsure of, of you know, do you have the right data? Do you have the right tools? And, the, and are you extrapolating and collecting it the right way? Um, I, I want to hey, say- Hey, Buck, yeah. Buck, Buck, I want- I want to point out that if they're in the middle, that means that only 50% of all their decisions are supported by good data. Oh, that is a great data point. That is true. How about that nugget? Really nice. Uh, let's see. So let's take some more questions. Mark Eric Brat Bailey. Mark Eric Bailey, welcome to 10X Owners Live. My name is Buck Wise from Cardone Ventures. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer, and we're talking all things marketing tonight. How can, how can we help you? Mark, are you there? Do we want to go with Kathy? Is Mark gone? No, hold on. Oh, hey, Mark. How are you, buddy? Oh, accept the unknown. Fine, Buck. How are you doing? Fantastic. What's your question? How can we help you? Well, one of my questions was, we're in dentistry, and I've spoken with Brandon and Enrique before one-on-one, -on -one, and one of the interesting things is we have a variety of dental businesses, but we're 100% in the dental field. So in one business, we serve dentists that need turnaround management solutions. In another business, we own an implant company and an implant institute where we teach dentists. It's very difficult starting out with some of those businesses to find a database or know the people or actually reach to the people. All of our clients are dentists. So uh, we've been, people have said to us, you should go out and buy a, a dentist specific mailing list sure. that the big guys use. But, you know, if you're, if you buy a list, that's a cold list, it's really hard to effectively market that sure. without being blacklisted if you're doing email blasts. Et sure. I'm glad you know that Mark, that was going to be my next comment. You're in a dangerous territory if you start buying those yeah. lists. Yeah. What's so your that's question? A problem from that perspective for us. So we actually stopped doing that or we stopped even attempting to do that because we felt that, first of all, the click-through rate was very minimal. Sure. Uh, and the number of leads and things that you received from it sure. just it didn't make it worthwhile. Plus, more importantly, I didn't want to be blacklisted because I'd rather be able to communicate with those warm leads that we get. Of course. Yeah. How, so what's your question then, Mark? How can we help you? I wanted your opinion on mailing lists, but I think I just got it. <laughs> you talked your own <laughs> self out of them, and I'm yeah. glad you did. They're very dangerous. They can be used effectively, but it is a sort of gray area, and you are absolutely right. You can ping your own email, your own infrastructure, and you can blacklist it. You become spammed and boxed by doing that. I know, uh, Paul, you and I, we've discussed mailing lists. Do you find, let me ask the question differently. Paul, is there any benefit at all to mailing lists in your opinion? I would steer clear of them as well, Buck. I think at the end of the day, 
how you acquire new names is one entire strategy. There's a whole other strategy around marketing and getting smarter about those individuals. Right. But mainly this, that, that as a business, um, I, I would actually stay away from because you're right, um, you can get blacklisted. Uh, you don't know really how truly qualified they are and if they want to hear from your brand. Right. So turning your attention to other places for qualified leads, I would definitely recommend. Sure, no doubt. And that's part of an overall campaign strategy. And you can get the basic foundation essentials to your marketing strategy again at cardonventures.com slash marketing. This is, and I'm listening to you by the way. So know that I have at least 70 different uh, video packages that you're gonna be getting interactive worksheets for marketing essentials. Trust me when I say that I'm listening to you in these live calls, and if there's something that's more important to you, I'm gonna make it a bigger priority to bring to you and your business. So if, if it's where to find those new user acquisitions or you know what your strategy is with bringing in those new names to your data, then that is something that will move up in the pipeline for you. So this is gonna be a continuation each and every month, $197, cardoneventures.com slash marketing. Michelle. How are you? Welcome to 10X Owners Live, where business owners with like-minded um, like minded success are coming together and, and joining us here at Cardone Ventures. How are you? Nope, Michelle's out, okay. Uh, who do you want, okay, is it, who's number four? Is it Brad? Yeah. Brad, how are you, buddy? Welcome to 10X Owners Live. I think we're gonna, we got 10 minutes here, so why don't you, why don't you ask your question and then we'll wrap up here in just a little bit. Brad, accept the unmute. Where is the unmute? There it is. You got it. I hear you now. How are you? Good. Good. What's your question? How can we help you tonight? Well, if I'm a, I'm a ball coach, so it's the fact that I understand data from a ball perspective, but is there a way to market the game game plan and marketing plan to those players, like individual consumers and stuff like that? Sure, let me see if I can understand your question. You're asking if data can be used to target specific uh, audiences? Is awesome. that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. In fact, I was gonna go down this path a little bit, but I just wasn't sure if we were gonna go off topic. But when we were talking about email lists, Paul, what would you say, let's take email lists and let's just throw them away right now. Where is the next best place for you to start targeting specific users? Now you have the data. You, you have context, right? You know who your customers are. Now you're looking for those very specific people. Where is the next best place that a business owner would go to find and gather those people? I actually think social media is a huge uh, opportunity for that. Um, whether that's, um, whether that's uh, starting with an email list that you can upload to Facebook and now you can turn around and start targeting them within the platform, or you're even just using your list to say, Here's my list of a thousand people. I want more like this. Help me find others that look like this group of people. Right. Social has a number of different mechanisms in which you can go out and, and get in front of those prospects that you already have and find new ones. I love that answer. Another creative idea for you if you're out there and you're thinking, I don't have a massive media budget. I can't spend the dollars to have the maximum uh, you know, reach or ROI. Another idea is a brand to brand partnership. This is something we've done on a larger scale. You know, we've, we've worked with two massive companies sharing their data together. But think about it from your standpoint in your local community. If you are in the fitness space, let's say that you are a yoga studio, right? Who are the brands in your community that you can connect with, right, and develop authentic organic relationships? Maybe a juice shop, right? Do yoga and juice go together? A healthy juice, organic juice shop and a yoga shop? Absolutely. Do you think that the same customer probably gets a juice from the place where they've done yoga? Absolutely, without a doubt, right? So let's go meet that owner. Let's get into the grassroots effort. It doesn't always necessarily take money to Brandon's point. It doesn't take software. It takes visibility, understanding your business, knowing who your consumer is, and making those physical connections, right? So that's another place that you can start is making those brand to brand connections in your own community because they have a list and you have a list. Why not share that list together? Um, I know that we're, we're, we're wrapping up here in just a little bit and we're gonna have the rest of the team continue on answering these questions about our new Marketing Essentials product. Brandon, is there anything, Paul, thank you so much for being here tonight. 
You are such a wizard. Brandon, is there anything you wanted to say before we split tonight? <clears throat> no, other than the fact that the value proposition that you're offering uh, to help guide people through the nuances, because you know, marketing, marketing strategies, marketing, when I hear marketing, like right. just to tell you, like when you, when you study data the way I do, when I hear marketing, I hear marketing, marketing strategies, marketing execution, sure. you know, like there's like, there's a whole bunch to have a successful engagement. Right. People go buy those lists and they do all sorts of things and they actually mess their businesses up. And then yep. the way they try to pare the list down to the top best clients, they don't know how to approach that. Right. You're going to teach, you're going to teach this stuff to people. And, and, and we just, you know, your, your history and experience, how deep it goes to, you know, when you told me you wanted to do this, I said, dude, we got way too many things going on. 197, I specifically do 197. This is not worth your time, sure. energy, or effort. Sure. You said with the thousands of questions you're getting from yes. us being on all these channels, you said, I'm not doing it because I'm trying to make money. I'm doing it because I want to help all these people and create better relationships and values. So look, uh, if, if somebody doesn't take advantage of this, then I just don't think they're serious about their business because I don't know how, I don't know how you're finding the extra time with everything we have going on to do yeah. this, but I know you're committed to it. So I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, Brandon, because we did have that conversation about the fact that events are opening back up. We're doing our 10X 360 events. We're going to be in Scottsdale. We're, we're going to be in Dallas. We're going to be in Miami here in Portland. And, and Brandon was going, dude, we have enough going on. Why do you want to create this weekly, monthly subscription? And I truly did say, because this is my passion. Like, this is what fills me up. This is what makes me feel, um, you know, grateful for what I'm able to offer. And I wanted to do it in a way that any single business owner at any stage in their business can participate, interact, and engage. And um, this is the solution. Plus, I get so many questions outside of our own products where, you know, I was talking today even, I'll, I'll call him out, I was talking to Steve Lagomarcio, who's everyone knows is, is a devout, loyal customer of ours. You know, he has a big business, TRC, out in, in Pennsylvania, and he's platforming with us. He's paid a lot of money uh, to work with Cardone Ventures, and we've given him uh, a lot of tools and, and templates to success. But he said, hey, you know, I, he heard about this $197 marketing platform. He goes, well, I'm obviously, I don't know that I would need any of that, right? And I said, well, would you want to start a podcast? You know, and he said, yeah. And I said, then this, you know, this is how to start a podcast, right? Like that's not necessarily included in some of the other products that we offer. So this is like your base level understanding of marketing. So starting- Yeah, I mean, Natalie and I, hey, Natalie and I spent the, I, she wanted to start that podcast that we started- a year and a half ago, right? I thought it was like crazy. I didn't want to do it, and she and Will forced me to do it. Yeah, and we were like fumbling around with what equipment. I bet you we bought three times the podcasting yeah. equipment than we needed to try to find the right stuff. But then when I met Grant and Elena, and Grant went back and looked at my podcast, he said, "Hey, you're the real deal." I can tell. Had we not invested in those podcasts, had right. Natalie not pushed me, and had we not fumbled around with all right. that, right? Who knows if he would have even partnered with me? Yeah. Hey, I do want to point out. Uh, Joel Burr and his wife, uh, look, did, I don't know if anybody else can see it, but they both are wearing shirts that say data. Yeah, we saw that in the pre-show. Yeah. They it's are, awesome. they are ready for tonight's show. There is no doubt. I do love that. Awesome. I like when, when you address for the occasion, for sure. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, we actually just for full disclosure, I actually shot the podcast course today. It releases in July. It's going to be next month. So if you sign up today for 197, you're going to get that right in the beginning of July. And I do, to Brandon's point, talk about how to do podcasts on a budget or how to graduate to that next level and get the equipment, what platforms you should be on, how to do it for absolutely free. And in fact, here's a quick little, what we call a quick little tease. If you are part of this program, when you join tonight, there will actually be a segment in the podcast, how to start a podcast in under 60 seconds. I literally give you the answers if you say, oh, but I don't have time. How to start a podcast, literally, in under 60 seconds. I have that tip, it's waiting for you as a part of the Marketing Essentials. Um, without any further ado, Brandon, thanks again for joining live from Miami. Yeah, hey Buck, yeah. I just wanna point out, because I don't think everybody knows, you didn't do your whole resume. 
Do you guys know that Buck had the Buck Show Z100 for, what was it, 10 years? I did it for, I don't want to say it was 18, actually. I did, because I started when I was 16 years old. But I did. He had every single musician personally, all his interviews, Beyonce. He has interviewed every single person that's anybody in the music business. But can you give us your Z100 voice? You know, it's funny because I actually was, uh, I was playing an interview earlier today where I got into a fight. Uh, I was in a, an interview and we got into an argument and I was playing it for someone. Over the years, I, my radio voice changed. So in the 80s, and I didn't do radio in the 80s, I was still a little kid, but in the 80s, DJs would go, hey, everybody coming around town with a big pound of sound. I'm the man with a master plan throwing down the big jam all around town, like Debbie Slater said, right? Like they would do this, like this called, it's like radio drill. It's like this rapid fire over the song. That's that hot chalk. And then you got into the 90s and people realized, wait a minute, nobody wants to be shouted out like that. You know, people want to have a real conversation. So then you got the like the new age DJs, yo, you know, it's Z100, how are you? I'm your DJ. So I was like a mix of both. I was like kind of, I was like high energy. Uh, I was also very young, but I, uh, I, I talked like I do kind of now, but just a little bit louder with a little more force. You know, it's, it's anyway, you could search it. There were podcasts there. I interviewed Pink. I interviewed Beyonce, Jay-Z six times. I interviewed... Uh, Kanye West twice. I got in an argument with Eminem. There's an article written about it. I found his music online. I released it. I was in Detroit. I did a show, a morning show in Detroit. I released his song before it was due, and he got pissed. He came down to the radio station with his record rep banging on the door. I was fired for one week to make his record label happy. The the Detroit Free Press wrote an article about it. It's Yeah, my background was in building audiences, telling stories, and creating content. So that is where my bit, and that's why in the beginning I talked about creativity was my foundation. It wasn't until later in life I realized the data is so much more important or just as important as the marketing creative. And so that's what I go through with your monthly subscription. I bring all of this experience working with big brands, creating my own show, um, uh, understanding content creation. It's all here in this monthly subscription. Guys, you don't have a $197 problem if you're not getting this. You've got a much bigger problem, like Brandon said. If you don't want to take the opportunity tonight to take advantage of this value, and I am just absolutely excited about this, so bring me the feedback as you go through this course together, and you can help me guide the future of courses for this Marketing Essentials program. Brandon, thanks so much for joining us, buddy. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to meet up tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Awesome. Did Brandon already bail? He left me. No, he, there he is. He's, he's muted. Okay. Brandon. Yeah, hey, Bucky. Great, show, great show tonight, man. Love the heart. Appreciate you doing this while I'm on the road. And, Thank you, uh, And I'm excited to see you tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Paul good Willie. night, everybody. Yeah, good night. Good night, Brandon. Paul Willie, thank you again. I appreciate it. Lifelong friend of mine, Paul, for helping us and giving us some more data tonight. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Josh and Ashley who are standing by right here in the studio and uh, they are going to take it away with more information about this beautiful Marketing Essentials program that I cannot wait to see you in tonight. Remember that price does go up so take advantage of it while you can get in now at that 197 offer. Josh and Ashley take it away. Hi, I'm Buck Wise, Chief Marketing Officer at Cardone Ventures. And for over 20 years, my background includes television, radio, building my own agency, and working for the world's largest brands. I did marketing for Starbucks, Google, and Nike. Now I wanna take those experiences and apply them to your business. Hey guys, we're here. We made it to the big screen. Yeah, we did. 10X marketing. I love it. Buck wise, everybody. CMO, Cardone Ventures. I want to hear in the chats right now who loves this idea. Because I love it. Like, I want to buy it for myself. I want to know who's taking advantage of this offer. If you took advantage tonight, I want you to put yes in the chats right now. I'm watching the chats. Yes, okay. I love it. Andreas, okay, who else? Who else? Abby, Peter Kindig. Awesome. Awesome. Ralph, thank you guys. 
That's awesome. That. Thanks, guys. We appreciate that. So, what, Donna, it, it's not allowing you to sign up. Donna, I'm going to post the link in the chat one more time here. We'll get you taken care of. Donna, you can also call Enrique right now. If he is in the chats, he is one of our salespeople. He will help you if you cannot transact right now. We want you to be able to get this. The value for $197. How can you not do this right now? And we're not going to give you the avenue where you can't do it. So what we're going to do is allow you to get on the phone with Enrique. Enrique, if you can DM her in the chats then, and get his phone number, he will call you right now and he'll go over it. He'll get you signed up. We want you to get this. Is everybody else signed up? It looks like there's a lot of people signing up. Valley I love that. Wise is here. Who yeah. has not signed up? That's what I want to see in the chat now too. Somebody say, if you have not signed up yet, say no. Bob, we want to get you in tonight. Let's find somebody in the, guys, let's find somebody in the chat right now who said no. Can we bring up Mike Wheeler? Mike Wheeler. Mike, are you on? Can you hear us? Mike, we got we to gotta get you to accept it. How's it going? Mike. Hey, Mike. How's it going, buddy? How are you? Good. How are you doing? We're doing Mike. great. I love you, buddy. I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm hoping that we can see each other at a boot camp. I got to ask, why would you not take advantage of a $197 offer right now? Well, that's a good offer, um, but I have already started some marketing team that I've created myself, and we're already working on a whole bunch of this stuff that I've studied the last year. So um, I'm trying to make sure that this is going to get traction that I want and take all the analytics and data that I've been creating and see how it's working first. That's awesome. What could you do with more? What if what you had more data? What? What, what could you do with more data? What could you do with from a different point of view? The chief marketing officer of places, I mean, this guy's worked at Nike. This guy's worked at Starbucks, Hasbro. He's had his own radio show. I mean, he's, he's giving you all this value for $197 a month. How could you say no to that? Like, keep in mind that you, you probably do have a lot of things that you're doing right now, and I, I applaud you for that, but what else could you be doing? Could you add this in there? Could you get more? What could you do with $197 a month from the value of a chief marketing officer of a million dollar, a multi-million dollar company? Sure. I mean, more data is always good, um, but it takes time to go through all that data. So I like to scale at a certain rate and I want to take the time to take all the data that we're gathering right now, use all those analytics, and then after I see how that works, I might join in later. I, and I know that I may not be in at the $197, but it's still going to have good value at the $497. You're absolutely right. It will have good value at the $497, but take advantage of it now. Make a commitment to yourself to do something now. You invest, you make the time for the things that are important. To give you this value right now is, is, is widely important. Make the commitment to yourself. DM Enrique in the chats. We want to talk to you. It. Give us a call. Enrique, send it, give him our phone number. Call us right now. We want to talk to you. We can give you the information. All right. The I next, appreciate it. Thank you. The next person that we want to talk to is Jean. Jean says he needs more 